Did you just get done reading the red wheelbarrow and wonder, that's it? If so, you're in the right place and you're certainly not alone. Today, we're going to be doing a reading summary and analysis of William Carlos Williams's very famous, very confusing, but I would argue very touching poem, The Red Wheelbarrow. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. That's it. That's all there is to go on. And if you're anything like I was in high school, you are thinking to yourself something along these lines. That's stupid. I can't believe there's nothing there. What's the message? Why didn't I write that? How is that something that makes you famous, etc.? And those are justifiable reactions. But after I spent some time with the poem and I read it in some other scenarios and contexts, I discovered it's an amazing poem and it's one of my personal favorites. So let's talk about why that is. Kenneth Cook famously said that poetry is a combination of meaning and music. And we'll get to the meaning in a little bit, but let's see if we can find some music to this poem. You might be wondering to yourself, what music? There doesn't seem to be a meter. There's no rhyme, alliteration, anaphora, assonance, any of those fancy words that make you learn in English class. All the things you'd see in a typical poem, they're not here. But there is a music to this poem. It's just very simple and it's kind of hidden, but you can see it just by looking at it on the page. The line breaks and the stanzas create this sort of cadence, this little kind of pattern to the poem. Let's listen to it one more time and see if you can hear it. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens. Did you hear it that time? There is a music to this poem, and it seems to be a melancholy one, and that's our first clue into the meaning of it. When you read the poem that way, you can tell it certainly isn't happy. It's still a little silly, like the whole chicken thing and everything, but it's not happy. So even if you think this poem is stupid and you want to give up on it, grant me that much at least and stick with me for a little bit further because we're going to talk about the meaning next. That's my favorite part of this poem. But first, you might be wondering to yourself, but why would you want to write your poems in a way it feels so stupid? And that's a good question. But I'm going to argue that this poem is written in this way because it ties into the meaning of the poem perfectly. So let's return to the poem. So we granted that the poem has sort of a melancholy, sad sound to it. But why is that? Well, the key is in the other poetic devices that Williams is using, but these aren't devices of music, they're devices of meaning. And the two big ones in this poem are imagery, which is Williams's favorite poetic device. And it's using words to depict things that we catch with our senses, like sight, so you can see the image, or you can hear it, or taste it, or smell it, or feel it, whatever it might be. So we get the image here. There's a red wheelbarrow, it's covered in rain, it's beside some birds. Okay. So that's our image. But what does this image mean? Well, the key to that comes with metaphor. And metaphor is a transformative comparison. It's a powerful comparison. It's even more powerful than a simile. You are not like a lion. You are a lion. It's taking one object and transforming it into another. And that's what Williams is really latching onto in this poem. So what's our object and why is it important? Well, Williams tells us why it's important. Well, maybe not why, but at least that it is. It's that very first stanza. So much depends upon. So whatever this object is, and you know the object, it's the red wheelbarrow, it's important. It's a crucial object to this speaker. And yet, look at how it's being treated. It is just covered with rainwater. And if you know anything about metal, when it gets covered in rainwater, if it's not taken care of and wiped off, it's going to rust. So apparently this object is important, so much depends upon it, and yet it's covered in rainwater. And even beyond that, it's sitting out by some chickens. This isn't the way we treat objects that are important to us. And why is this red wheelbarrow important to begin with? Well, when I think of items in my life that are important, it's not really as much the item, it's the people who use them. That's the metaphor. There's a transformation from the item to the person, right? Which is how a pair of keys or a pair of work boots or a car or an old book that's been handed down to you can become so important because they remind you of a person. And this transformation of humanity to an object is especially potent when it comes to someone dying. And 
I think that's what this poem is about. It's about death. And Williams was a doctor. I mean, he was a poet, obviously, but he was also a doctor. And he spent almost, you know, his entire professional career seeing people in some of their worst states, being around death. So this is someone who really understood death very well. And this red wheelbarrow isn't being taken care of, even though so much depends upon it, because the person who used it was gone. For me, I always get this image of a family staring out a window on a farm, seeing this red wheelbarrow, and just thinking, whoever used it isn't there anymore. It's the can of pop that they drank from last. It's the bed they never came back to sleep in. It's whatever it might be, those objects that people leave behind that so much depends on them all of a sudden. And that's the real key to this poem, and it matches the music so beautifully. It seems like an insignificant thing the way it's written. It seems like this poem is meaningless because the red wheelbarrow, it really kind of is meaningless. But for these people, so much depends upon it and it's taken on meaning. We see the insignificant become significant in this poem. And anyone who's lost someone and has a little treasure that they've left behind, no matter what it is, can tell you about the significance that that object can suddenly take on because it reminds us of them. It's almost like it has a bit of their soul, a bit of their humanity in it. It's a beautiful, and it's a tragic, and it's a sad way to write a poem, but it's a great one, I would argue. So why write it this way, though? Why did Williams take this approach? Well, an easier way to understand that might be by looking at one of his other poems, a less famous one. This is The Fig Tree, and what you see on the left is the final draft of the poem, the one that was published, and on the right is the first draft of the poem. And you've probably noticed that the first draft is almost twice as long as the final draft. And that's intentional. Williams loved cutting down his poems. I mean, look at this. The tree is there. The final draft is in the first draft. There's just a bunch of other stuff around it. And Williams said of this poem that in the first draft, he couldn't see the tree in the poem because there were descriptions, and they're good descriptions, but he found them superfluous for his message. He wanted to cut poetry down to the bare bones. I mean, he cuts the word tree in the second stanza of the first draft. It's a poem about a tree, and he takes tree out of it. But if you read that final draft, even without the first one, you can figure out that it's a poem about a tree. And I think that's really cool. And in our age of you know, Twitter and, you know, shorthanded texts and, and small captions. I think we can appreciate a poet like Williams who just wanted to get right to the matter of things. And even though he's frustrating, I, and believe me, I know he's frustrating. There's some real beauty in his poems. So I encourage you to read them, memorize them. If you want, you can memorize the red wheelbarrow in like 15 minutes flat, if not less. And it's a, it's a great poem to carry around with you. So let's take a look at the lasting influence of this poem. Um, it appears in The Fault in Our Stars in this very beautiful and touching section. It's in 13 Reasons Why, and it's in Season 8 of The Office in a slightly less critically acclaimed section of, um, of the work. But uh, it's all over the place. There's many, many more examples because it's really meant a lot to a lot of people. And um, I'd encourage you to, if you've read or seen any of these, to go back and look at this poem again in those sections now that you've uh, dwelt on it a little bit more. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Subscribe for more videos on poetry and literature. And if you have a poem that you would like me to talk about in detail, let me know. Uh, and I will do my best to create a video about it. Thank you so much and have a good one. Bye.